AUC Author Series. In this series of programs, we interview the authors in the Atlanta University Center community and introduce you to their latest published works. This program is produced by Brad Oss and Daniel Lee. Our guest today is Dr. Dwayne Jackson. Dr. Jackson is an associate professor and chairperson of the psychology department at Morehouse College. His research interests include learning and behavior in insects, swarm intelligence, and human and non-human animal behavior in the zoo setting. Dr. Jackson is a board member of the Atlanta Zoo. He has traveled around the world to conduct his field studies and lectures. Library. I'm glad to be here. Will you tell us, uh, give us an overview of your latest work? Yeah, and I'll try to be brief. This, the latest work was the most difficult thing that I have done. Uh, and the reason for it is because of who I was working with. My area is insect behavior. And I've written articles dealing with uh, in insect behavior. I've dealt with articles dealing with uh, using the zoo as an educational place. Uh, I've written articles uh, dealing with black scientists. My secondary area is learning and memory. Well, what happened about three years ago, the chairman of the accounting department, Emmanuel Olafati, came to me and said that he was working on this uh, project and it dealt with learning and memory. And learning and memory is my secondary area in graduate school. And uh, he wanted to work with me and to work on this project and to publish a paper. And I said, fine. If I had known how much, how difficult this would have been, I might have hesitated. I'm glad I didn't, but it was a struggle. Because you see, when people talk about multidisciplinary, I've written with, my training is in psychology, zoology, and entomology. I've written with psychologists, I've written with entomologists, published entomologists, and published with biologists. Here I was dealing with somebody in accounting. And so when you talk about multidisciplinary, this is really just jumping out. Because usually when it's multidisciplinary, it's people in similar fields, you know, scientists, mm -hmm. or people who are in the humanities, or people in business. But here you had a scientist working with somebody in business. So the bottom line was this. Uh, the title of the paper was uh, Recall and Serial Position Effect and the role of primacy and recency on accounting students' performance. Now, let me break that down. Thank you. Okay. If you go to a party, well, let, let me go even further back. In a laboratory, when you give human subjects a list of numbers to remember, they tend to remember the things at the beginning and the things at the end. But the things in the middle are kind of vague. The same thing if you give them a set of words, they tend to remember the things at the beginning and at the end, but not in the middle. This is called serial position effect. Remembering things at the beginning is called the primacy effect, primary, beginning. Mm -hmm. And things at the end are referred to as a recency effect, the most recent things. Now, you know, when I teach, I teach learning and memory too. I teach animal behavior, but I also teach learning and memory course. And when I tell students, give an example, I say, let's say you go to a party. Your friend invites you to a party. He can't go. Well, she can't go. But they say, go on to the party anyway. So you go. You don't know anybody at the party. The party is totally boring. I mean, really boring. He stayed about three hours. He said, oh, I can't take this party. So you leave. You go back and you see your roommate. Your roommate said, well, how was the party? What you will remember 
more than likely is when you first knocked on the door, who opened the door up? That's the primacy effect. And you'll tend to remember when you tell everybody, okay, well, I'm leaving. you remember when you left. That's the recency effect. But what happened in the middle of the party is something you wouldn't remember. Oh. All right, now, what Emmanuel Odafani came in, he's a good friend. I mean, we've been on committees together, but we had never done anything academically together. Now you scholarly scholar piece. So, what he wanted to do was really have, he teaches accounting. And what's really unique about accounting is that in accounting you have these three major modules, but you can teach them in any order, okay. which is very unusual because usually you have to teach things in steps, but you can teach it in any order. So one class got it like module A, B, and C. The other class, same teacher, got it where it was C, B, and A. They got it reversed. Then what he did on each exam was for each class is one third of the class would get material that was in order the same way it was taught. A third of the class would get the test where they got it reversed. So in other words, the things they learned at the end, right before they took the test, that came first. And then the things in the middle were in the middle, and things at, that they were taught at the beginning was taught, I mean, was on the test last. Mm -hmm. And then you had a third of the class, they took the test, and the questions were all random, you know. So, what we want to see is to see if we, and he did this for each exam, we did this on the final. He wanted to know whether we would have, uh, whether we'd see primacy or recency effect. Now, I was fascinated by this because. In psychology, we tend to think of this as like a one-time thing, not a whole course, mm -hmm. not a whole course. And what we found out was that it was a primacy effect. Students tended to remember things they were taught first, no matter where it was on the test. Uh, and Emmanuel knew, I mean, he's an accounting person, he knew about primacy and recency effect. He knows some psychology, mm -hmm. I'll give him that. But since, you know, this was my minor in graduate school, my thing was to really uh, write, I was the second author on this, I did the history of this whole concept of the serial position effect and primacy and recency effect, and really worked on the, the design and help with the analysis of it. But we brought in another accounting person and another psych person. They were third and fourth authors. And at first it was rough because it was like we were talking like this, mm -hmm. you know, psychologists and an accountant, you know. We were like on different zones, different levels, you know, because our training was different. And at first, you know, it was funny because he would write something, I would write something, and, you know, I'd take it back to the other psychologists because there was two psychologists working on this paper, and it was like, what are they talking about? And then I know they were doing the same thing. What are they talking about? But it finally, uh, it took us about three years, wow. you know, working on this. Because we all do other projects, too, working on this. But we did uh, last about, oh, about five or six months ago. Uh, I mean, when we first sent it, they wanted some revisions. And then we sent it back, and then they congratulated us and said that, you know, uh, it's going to, it's been accepted for publication and it was in the Academy of Educational Leadership Journal. Well, Emmanuel, while we went through the process, entered this thing in the competition, this wow. paper. And I said, well, okay. And uh, we won. We won. And, and what happened was we got uh, the Distinguished Research Award from the Academy of Educational Research Leadership. Uh, Distinguished Research Award for this paper. So it was worth the trouble, but it was a uh, uh, it was a rough paper, and it's it should be out in the next couple of months. Mm 